Show Me Chefs would like to thank 319 Event Center for hosting the competition. 319 Event Center uh, started around four years ago. Uh, the concept of 319 Event Center has brought in a diverse uh, opportunities to bring different events, not just weddings, uh, just from corporate events to corporate lunches, dinners, Christmas parties, anything in this complex from two people all the way up to 200 people. Uh, we have had the beard and mustache competition. Any type of event, some, anybody, anybody who thinks of an event that can bring people together, we have the capability of doing it. We are a one-stop shop as well, from the venue, to food, to the liquor, yeah, as far as we can even arrange valet parking. Show Me Chefs was a concept that Sean got. Him and I had this idea and Dr. Deb Larson, ha we happened to meet her on a different project and we shot her the idea. Actually kind of showing her the possibility of, hey, how cool is it to do this here? And then on top of that, getting the local food producers, kind of bringing the community together to do some kind of a cool show like this. Hello, I'm Laken McGee. And I'm Samantha Bowers. And welcome to Show Me Chefs. to battle through trials and challenges and finally made it to this final round. The winner of today's competition will be crowned champion of Show Me Chefs and go home with $3,000. Our chefs will go through three rounds of cooking and present their dishes to the judges who will then decide their fate here in the final round of Show Me Chefs. Lakin will be with our chefs while I check in with our judges. Today's show features two returning chefs who have proved themselves in the quarter and semifinal round. Our first chef is Chef John Allen from the Aviary Cafe and Crapery. The next chef is Tony Garcia from Avanzari. So Chef Tony, are you excited for today's competition? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Do you know Chef John? I know John. <laughs> All right, well good luck today. I'm gonna to need it. Chef John, are you excited? Yeah, I'm amped up, ready to go. You're ready to go? Right. You're gonna be Chef Tony? Uh, me and Tony are both three tough guys. I don't know, it's gonna be a fun showdown. Okay, well good luck today. All right. The rules are changing for our chefs here in the final round. Each chef will be given 12 ingredients provided by local businesses. Each round, they will be given 25 seconds to choose four ingredients to use for their dish, along with the highlighted ingredient. Today, we have three judges who represent many facets of work from around the Springfield area. Our judges today are Dr. Victoria Queen, founder and former president of Victory Trade School, Rick Martinez, food editor and recipe developer at Bon Appetit Magazine, and Christine Dawes, former news anchor and owner of Granola. Lakin, back to you. Thanks, Sam. Now is the time for the appetizer round. But first, let's see what ingredients our chefs will choose. We have caramels from Uncommon Confections, ground pork from Wild Bunch, pheasant eggs from Ann Horseman, an assortment of Mother's Beer from Mother's Brewing Company, leafy greens from New Horizon Hydroponics, scallops from Captain Craig, hot jam, peanut butter, rainbow carrots, rainbow chard, coconut, zucchini, and butternut squash, and telegio cheese, all from our pantry provided by Mama Jeans. Remember, you will have 25 seconds to choose four of these ingredients. Each round, the remaining ingredients will be used in the later rounds, so choose wisely. Now is the time to present the highlighted ingredient. We have mocha java granola from Granola Love, and now is time to choose your four ingredients. Chef John, let's see what you picked. You chose coconut, scallops, hot pepper jam, and pheasant eggs. Okay. Do you know what? Do you have an idea with what you're going to be doing? I think so, but it'll probably change two or three times between now and the time we start. So. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. Right. Chef Tony, let's see what you chose. I'm ready. 
zucchini and squash, scallops, rainbow carrots, and peanut butter. Do you have an idea? Kind of. Kind of? Yep. Do you feel like uh, you can have the upper Depends on the flavor, hand? so we see what it really okay. tastes like. Do you think it'll change Maybe. frequently? For always. Okay. All right, well, good luck. I'm going to need it. Coming up on Show Me Chefs, the competition really gets cooking as our chefs try to make their appetizers. I'm a upset. <laughs> yes, you are. Your name is... Oh! Oh! Okay, chefs, you will have 20 minutes to impress the judges with your appetizers. Your time starts now. Chef John, you having some trouble opening that? Yeah, that's a pretty tossed out coconut. Woo! Chef Tony, I think Chef John's having a little trouble opening his coconut. Uh, I got a knife if you need one, buddy. Gonna do I'm gonna do. I'm gonna combine the uh, the carrots with the um, with the butternut squash. Those combinations they go really well together. Okay. There's gonna be the little veggie for that, so we'll be mm -hmm. good. And I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna do the scallops, little blackened scallops. And I'm gonna try to make something a little weird, a little sauce that I haven't made it before. I'm gonna figure out a way to combine those two together. Let's find out more about granola. I started making this granola at home just so my kids would have a healthy breakfast. A lot of granolas use about a 60% oat ratio. They start with oats. The more oats you add, the less room you have for a lot of other ingredients. So we only use about a 30% oat ratio. And then we just pack it full of premium ingredients like walnuts and almonds and pumpkin seeds and flax seed and sunflower seeds. So it's got a lot of healthy fats and proteins. And we sweeten it with honey, which I think is a great natural sweetener. So I wanted my kids to have something they could eat in the morning for breakfast that wouldn't give them like the sugar crash. This will be a side business to make money, but also let's have a mission in mind um, that's a little bit greater. We want to do some good in the world. So we give 10% of our profits to uh, children's bone research because of our daughter and the treatment she's gone through. And we do that through Shriners Hospitals. So Judge Christine, granola from Granola is our highlighted ingredient. Now. How do you cook with granola? You know, I do exactly the first thing they did. They pulsed it in the processor. That's exactly what I have to do for almost every recipe oh, with there we my go. granola. So that was that was smart. They know what they're doing. Awesome. <laughs> but both we're really chefs. we're curious that they're both using scallops with it. So can't wait to see what they do. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's take a moment to get to know our chefs. My name is uh, Tony Garcia, and I'm chef owner of Gonzalez. I'm from Mexico. I grew up in Chicago. Bob Noble, which is Noble and Associates, they brought me here in Springfield. I always, uh, for some reason, I always love cooking. I didn't mean that I'm going to be, I didn't know if I'm going to be good out of it or anything, but I was always, I always love cooking. I was, I always cook. I always did stuff since I was little. You know? So I don't know why. I was, I just always love to cook. So. Because I know when I bring you something on the table, I know it's the best quality I was able to bring you to the table. Since the bread, since the olive oil, since the sauces, pastas, everything. I think I won't change anything. I just keep doing the same what I'm doing, and uh, if it's more work, I'm just gonna keep doing it. My grandma was a, a professional cook slash chef out in California for uh, about 40 years. And when I was 11 or so, my mom bought a restaurant and my grandma was the, uh, the head cook for our restaurant. And I can remember going to the restaurant after I got out of school and, and just kind of tugging on my grandma's apron and, and, and trying to learn 
from there. We thrive on being something that people can't get anywhere else. As we were getting ready to open, we, we realized that out of the 500 restaurants in Springfield, about 455 of them were the same. You get a lot of the same thing over and over again, not much variety, um, and, and we just really felt like we needed to find a, you know, a, a niche where we could provide something that other people can't. And that's, that's how we came up with this place. Throughout the years, I've done just tons of chef's dinners, tons of specials. I mean, here at this restaurant alone, we've had like 12 different menus since we've been open in four and a half years. I've cooked a little bit of everything in my life. Pretty much anything they can throw at me, I'll, I'll know how to use it as far as ingredients go. So I won't be stumped by anything I don't think, which is gonna be an advantage for me. Welcome back to Show Me Chefs. You're joining us in the final minutes of the appetizer round. Let's see how our chefs are doing. Chef John, oh, that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, still doing good on time. time. Uh, doing all right, a little behind, but catching okay. up. Okay. What about the pheasant eggs? How are you going to use that? Um, they're going to get put into a little rice noodle salad. Okay. It's going to be a nice warm salad with scallops on top. Okay. And uh, the poached egg to crack in it. Okay. Looking pretty good. Chef Tony, looking very colorful over here. Yeah, spring. Yes, ready for yeah. spring. Okay, have so, you tried a little bit of it? I've tried the sauce already. Okay, is it good? So it's good. I'm okay. just waiting for the um, nasty get roasted. I mean, we're ready. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Yeah, Baba. Chefs, you were told to create an appetizer using the ingredients that you chose. The time has now come to present to the judges. The judges will be grading your dishes on several factors. The presentation, the aroma, the taste, and use of the ingredients given. Chef John? Please present your dish. Yeah, so uh, I did a, a charred scallop. It's got a little crust of the chocolate Java granola on it. Um, just real simple salt to, to season it. Left it uh, pretty plain so you can get the true taste of scallop. Um, served it medium rare over uh, some coconut and sambal broth with uh, some nice fresh green herbs in it. Did basil, cilantro, and parsley in the broth and then strained it out with the, with the coconut as well. Um, did a little uh, al dente rice noodle with a, uh, a poached egg on top, and uh, it is definitely meant to, to crack the egg and spread it all over the plate, so enjoy playing with it. I really like the way the scallops cooked. I, I wish I had a little bit more of the granola. Um, yeah. Just as another crunchy element, I. I get the flavor of it, um, but I kind of want a little bit more of it. Sure. But the uh, I think the the flavor was really really strong on it. It was it. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's an impressive granola, and it uh, it's got a little kick. If you will, it's kind of like the porter of granola. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think the sauce and the uh, the scallop help pair really nicely together. Wow, there's some good kick in that sauce. I mean, it's not overwhelming. It's really good as soon as I taste it, and I can smell a little bit of the coffee just because maybe I'm used to it. Well, I like the egg, the mixture of the egg with the scallop. I wouldn't have thought of doing that with coconut and then with chocolate. <laughs> Everything's better with egg yolk. <laughs> Chef Tony, please tell the judges what you've made for them. So, I did black and scallop, so pinch it a little bit. One side's gonna have a little black pepper and culture salt. Here's one side. The other side's gonna have the, um, the uh, little mix that I did between the, uh, the, the uh, uh, curls that I put on top of it. So kind of like bake like a little cookie in a way, in a way. So you're gonna have caponata in the bottle, which is gonna be uh, onions, uh, tomatoes, a little bit of tomato sauce, a little bit of um, butter squash to clean your palate. That will clean your, definitely your palate with the carrots and the butter squash. If you told me peanut butter and tomatoes, I would have thought you were crazy. No. But it works. I've done it before and, uh, and then if you want more citrusy, if you're not drinking red wine, then you can squeeze the lemon and the lemon will change the complete the whole flavor around it. And um, and normally I don't do the lemon and the sauce because most of the, most of the time people are drinking red wine, so they complete, I will kill the red wine if I put lemon on the sauce. But if you put lemon in, in, the, in there right now, I mean, you can switch the whole. They give you a big twist all the way through it. 
But I'm going to try it with the, with the lemon. Yeah, I like it with the lemon. You're giving me so many good ideas for my granola. <laughs> Judge Christine, what are your thoughts on Chef Tony's use of the granola? It's very unique. Very different. And I was, when both chefs went for the scallops, I thought, oh, they might be doing something similar, but they both did something very different with the granola. And I, I applaud their creativity. This is definitely unique, and uh, I'm impressed. Coming up, our chefs prepare to square off in the entree round. Like so many people these days, we live in the suburbs. A traffic jam. On their own for the first time. It takes a while for a young couple to realize all they're in for when they buy a house. Hello, I'm Shane Franklin. Something interesting is happening. Baby boomers are following their millennial generation kids into America's downtowns looking for a new American dream. This migration is changing the urban landscape and challenging our mythology of suburban life. America's two largest generations are ready for life downtown, but are America's cities ready for them? Welcome back to the final episode of Show Me Chefs. Before the break, our chefs went through a 20-minute appetizer round and created some fantastic dishes for our judges to grade. Now is the time for the entree round. Each chef will have 35 minutes to prepare an entree using four ingredients from the remaining eight. Remember, whatever ingredients are left will have to be used in the dessert round. So be smart, chefs. And now for the highlighted ingredient. We have fresh snapper from Captain Craig. Chefs, you have 25 seconds to choose your remaining ingredients. Let's see what our chefs chose. Chef John, you chose squash, rainbow carrots, ground pork, and rainbow chard. Do you have any idea how you're going to be doing this? <laughs> I have no I mean, idea. Those are some yeah. interesting ingredients, right? I can pull it off. Pull it off? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Chef Tony, you chose... The beer? <laughs> Mother's beer? Mother's assorted beers. The hot pepper jam. Hot pepper jam, ground, ground pork. pork. And the and lettuce. The... Oh. So we'll be one of those lettuce. Okay. Chefs, you will have 35 minutes to complete your entrees. Your time starts now. Tony, do you used to sing while you work? Do you, do you huh? like to sing while you cook? I was singing? Yeah, you were. <laughs> I hope it wasn't in English. <laughs> I always do a little, little music around. John, you like music while you work? I do, but we have open kitchens at both my restaurants. Oh, so you can't play it too loud? So we wind up not listening to much music, unfortunately, except for the French cafe music that is, uh, that is on. So you feel like you're in Paris all the time? What's that? You feel like you're in Paris all the time? Yes. <laughs> we actually have competitions so you can come up with the stupidest song to hum during work. Um, and usually, usually I win. What are some of your favorite songs to hum? I sing musicals. I know, I know. Wow. I'm, a, I'm a tough chef. I have a, a troubled background, as a lot of people know. But I'm not opposed to singing Fiddler on the Roof. Um, and a lot of times I do it just to keep my crew in a good mood on a really busy day. <laughs> A little more. Chef. So are we getting a beer batter fried fish? Ah. Come on, Tony. You can do it, buddy.
Ha! No wait. Tall Tony, don't do it. Check out New Horizon Hydroponics Lettuce Farm. Right now we've got about 30 different varieties of lettuce growing. Uh, we do that to provide to our customers a whole spectrum of taste to meet their preferences. The soil in the Ozarks notoriously is poor and we can balance the nutrients to adjust to the different tastes that we want, the different growth rates that we want and uh, it gives the customer a better product. We produce lettuce uh, 12 months of the year. We sell at the farmer's market 12 months of the year. Ha! Bro there. It's gonna be better than Popeyes. That's making French fries with that butternut squash. They almost look like french fries. So lettuce, I got it right here. I'm done with this. I might use tomato, let's chop it up. Chef Tony, are you making french fries with that butternut squash? That's what they look like. I'm excited. Yeah, drop the play. All right, so I think I've already got all I need. So I can just gonna skillet, it, because I only got one bowl left. Oh, hold on. Join us after the break as our chefs continue their battle in the entree round. Nine hundred and Detective Callow, I'm here to evaluate your most recent criminal activity. By the looks of it, I think it's safe to say things didn't go so well. This is the part where you tell me what happened. No comment. Wow. Gosh, I'm so sorry. You just startled me a little. I apologize. What a cute house you have. I don't think I can wait to get a tour. Uh, well, I appreciate it. So can I get a tour? Uh, sure. So what are you going to be creating today? So, of course, I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, the red snapper, with, served with the pasta. So I'm going to make a little pasta primavera. So let's see how that works. Okay. 
Okay. And I gotta make a sauce with that, so I gotta come up with a sauce too. So that's the one I gotta... Yeah, maybe use the beer, or... Well, I'll use the beer for the breading. Oh, okay. So okay. we're good with it, with it, with that, with that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the bread for this, the breading for this. It'll be kind of interesting. Okay, well, good luck to you. I'm gonna need it. Chef John. Yeah. How are you doing over here? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good? You doing good on time? Oh yeah, doing great on time. Okay. So what are you uh, cool, going to be creating? Cool thing about fish is as soon as you get it filleted, it really only takes like, I don't know, two minutes to cook. So okay. I got some time to play with a couple other ingredients and try and do something cool. Okay, so do you have any clue what you're going to be creating for our judges? I'm going to make a little hash with some uh, olive minute sausage okay. and uh, put a piece of crispy fish over the top and, uh, and make a little, a little uh, roux-y with, uh, with some of the, the bone and flesh from the, from the snapper and hopefully it'll turn out awesome. Almost like the coconut, right? Got to get that open. Except for, <laughs> I actually know how to cut fish. Usually, I fish all the time out on uh, out in the local lakes and cook a lot of uh, fish at home. And both me and my wife love it, so I wind up cooking it quite a bit. Okay. So the ingredients that Chef Tony has over there, do you feel like he might have a little more to work with, or do you feel uh, like you got it? I think I'm, I'm pretty happy, honestly. Pretty happy with your ingredients? Yeah. Yep, I'm happy with it. Okay, well, good luck to you. Captain Craig Seafood, we provide fresh seafood. We carry a wide variety of frozen products. And the size of city that Springfield is, there is very little actual uh, availability of fresh fish. And so we kind of meet that need for people that want to eat a healthier diet, want to have a more sustainable diet, and uh, just all around want fresh seafood. We get in a lot of specialty products, swordfish, uh, mako shark, cobia, amberjack, all of those sort of things that you just can't get from a grocery store. Judge Rick, what do you think about the two dishes that we have coming along here? What are your thoughts? Um, they're very different, which I'm excited about because I, I think they're uh, they're both going to be really good, and I'm anxious to try both of them. What about the smell? Judge Christine, can you describe the smell to our viewers? Well, I smell the garlic, which is why I was asking about that. And just, but um, the garlic and the fish a little bit, I mean, I think those two go so well together naturally. But, um, you know, we're getting two really different fish treatments, so this is really interesting. I love the way you see their personalities coming out. You, Tony has a flair going with all the colors and everything and John seems really methodical and like he's very much a purist over there. So we're we're in for Two it. Two different mm -hmm. dishes. Yeah. All right, Tony. Be a little smoke in the show for you guys. So Chef Tony, why were you letting your batter rest above the uh, the oven to keep it warm? <clears throat> Just to get in rice, they will rise a little bit like a, um, the breading will stick easier on the fish. Oh, so it won't come out when you put it there. So as soon as you put the fish there, I don't need to have the fish inside to let it stay there. So I just want to dip it, throw it in and automatically going to go up on the flour, on the, uh, on the fry oil. It'll be something, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I like, I like to do that. So I've done it before. And it's nice. Oh, got one. Join us after the break as the minutes wind down on the entree round here on Show Me Chefs. Hello, I'm Lake McGee. And I'm Samantha Bowers. And welcome to Show Me Chefs. Show Me Chefs is a community-based culinary competition show. It uses local foods, local chefs, local food producers, and we put that all together with students to create this great thing 
together. Students who take Show Me Chefs are really going to get a couple of things. They're going to get a real life television production experience. They're also going to get something for their resume that they can be very proud of and hopefully help them get a job. But most and foremost, they're going to understand work ethic, they're going to understand teams and collaboration, and that's what's really important to me. We had a tremendous success for um, season one. The fact that a university student project was able to air on KOZL was, I think, a big milestone for our department. It was the first time that something like this has happened. And um, by the responses that we've had from people, people have loved watching it and everyone is craving to see a season two happen. Um, we actually started pre-production for season two right when season one production ended and we've been mapping out what we can do better, what we can improve on. We're bringing back the winner of season one to be our, a judge for every single episode. There will be more consistency with that, more personality. We're going to have more packages on our food producers, get to know them more. Some of the new things that we've been working on in pre-production so far are making more structured chef rounds. So the rounds will have themed items, so we'll have like different things about like under the sea so it'll be a seafood episode and things like that so that's a really cool new feature we also have brand new food producers um, and some of the old ones as well so some that are new to the new to the area so it's really cool to bring in people who are new to the community and give them a chance to kind of be a part of something that we're starting here so it's it's really a grassroots thing that's fun and we're also opening up the chef applications to student and lay chefs so it gives us a great variety of new talent and uh, talent here in the Ozarks well, we hope to add more funds to our base fund, but essentially one of the main things that we really want to do that we didn't have money for this season is to purchase a remote control camera so that we always have a camera on the judges. That was something that we found lacking last time that the, the judges actually did talk a lot. We didn't have a camera on them. It didn't make a lot of sense to hear what they were saying. If they interact with the chefs more or if they interact between themselves, we really need sometimes to hear what they're saying. Uh, for season two, our budget is about a fourth of what we had for season one. Uh, for season one, we were fortunate enough to receive some money and grants through Missouri State University and other places, but we don't qualify for them this year because we've already used it. And now we just need more support from the community to make this season happen. Getting these cameras and getting them from the community will mean the world to us because that's like the community investing in us. Uh, I think it's important to support the Show Me Chefs effort because it unites multiple areas in the university. So there are so many elements that go into the production of this show that we get our talent from so many different areas and really anyone can resonate with with that because they have a connection to someone who did something for the show. Plus everyone likes food so <laughs> it's always fun to, to support something with great food. We hope that everybody wants to invest in this show because it is a really terrific learning based, community based project and the more that we can fulfill our end of the bargain of the production value of the show, the more we think people will enjoy it and watch it and continue to keep this thing going. Welcome back to the final episode of Show Me Chefs. You're joining us in the last minutes of our entree round. I didn't know I can do that. Is it hard to time fish because you gotta, when you're ready to like to serve it, you have to keep yes. it warm? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really easy to overcook this fish too. But I shouldn't have said that because now Tony will know. <laughs> uh, you don't want to give him any help. No. Y la chona se mueve. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, baby. Okay, salt and blood pepper. <laughs> All right, muchacha. Gonna have the pork in there, okay?
Chefs, your time is ticking. You now have two minutes remaining. One minute, chef. Oh. Chef Tony, is that mushrooms? Yes, man. I got white wine, shiitake, um, mushrooms in there. Two more, two more, Tony. You got it. Two more. 30 seconds for those final touches. Black pepper. Fala. Go. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't forget those. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up, knives down. Chefs, you were given 35 minutes to create an entree using the ingredients that you have chosen. Chef Tony, please present your dish. What well, I did three different styles for cooking in one place. So I did a, the fish, the red snapper was breaded, like beer breaded in there. You can see that, I, uh, I fry it. It's gonna be a little spice, they're gonna have barely a little spice, not much in there, so. Um, and I did the fettuccine with the um, pork, with the pork ground, ground pork with red wine, reduction sauce, a little bit of tomato sauce, and um, just a little bit of spices. I didn't want to make it too strong because the fish, I don't want to overdo the fish. And I did a little vegetables, kind of like a spring veggies with a salad, kind of like a salad cold deal that I put there for you together. And I did a lemon, garlic white wine, shiitake sauce. Enjoy it. Lemon sauce, but limes on top, right? Yes. I said it. Can't wait to try this snapper. I like the flavor of the um, the batter a lot. Um, I kind of wish you hadn't poured the sauce over it because it, it got a little soggy at the end. I like the crispiness. There's so many different flavors on here. Is it hard to blend the pork and the fish and the? But I had to use a pour because I don't want to use that for dessert. <laughs> so that was just like a flavor delicious. explosion. I like the mushroom sauce. You use two different mushrooms. Oh, I have to show yes. one these. Shiitake and. and that's like button. a I think it's like a cremini mushroom cremini. in there. Um, and that one, um, normally I can a white wine, uh, red wine in that one. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to do it because then overdo the uh, the fish. So that's what I stay away from the for the wine on on the vegetables. Never met a mushroom I didn't like. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I've never had a fried squash like that. <laughs> a yep. French and then fried I did a little squash. basil, fried basil on the side. It can also kind of like change, twist it out of the palate a little bit, so. Thank you, Chef Tony. You may return Thank to you. your station. Thank you. Chef John, please tell the judges what you have made for them. Sure, uh, so I made a, a hash out of um, some all minute sausage with a little sage and thyme. Um, and then it has butternut squash, a couple different kinds of potatoes, and uh, all three colors of the tricolor carrots. And then on top of that, on the stacker, is some uh, vinegared Swiss chard. Um, use a little bit of red wine vinegar and a little bit of white wine and cook it down with onion and garlic. And then the, uh, the top is, uh, is the snapper. And then it's got the uh, flash fried spinach on top of that. And then uh, it's got a little uh, cream sauce on the side that I made out of smashing the head into some white wine. Um, so you got all the fish brains and, and love, I believe, strongly and using everything God gave us. So uh, try not to waste anything and uh, enjoy. Chef John, did you plan to layer it like this from the beginning? Is it intended uh, yes. to be eaten together and, like that? Yes, and the salt, the uh, the sauce will be a little salty without the fish. That's the majority of the flavor. 
Um, so it really needs to all come together. The, uh, I, the fish is so light and delicate, I really try not to do too much with it. It's I love the presentation. Thank you. Oh, wow. Flash fried spinach fries in a flash, doesn't it? Is yes. it like, yeah, how long? Yeah, 45 seconds. Is that it? Yeah. That's Basically awesome. till it stops popping at you. What spices did you use in the, um, in the hash? the sausage? Uh, literally just pepper. Um, really? I went kind of aggressive because the pork had a whole lot of fat and I didn't really want it to, to weight down the dish. I wanted it to be nice and light and the, uh, the pepper with the sauce, the salt and the vinegar balance and the chard, um, I was really trying to make it harmonious. So it should have, have definite layers. It, it, it's very mild and, and relaxing up at the top and, and, and go down more aggressively per layer. It's good. Very good. And the sweetness is from the, uh, the butternut squash? Uh, butternut squash and the carrots were really sweet, actually. Um, I, was, I was surprised at how sweet they were. That was another reason why I went a little more aggressive with the seasoning on it. The, uh, the squash and the carrots together were, uh, were pretty sweet. Did the snapper work out the way you wanted it to, as far as the skin on? Uh, no. Usually I have a torch in my arsenal. Um, and I got to the end of the dish and realized I didn't have my torch. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I had to, had to make the best I could. Um, that's where the, the flash fried spinach came in, was just to give it a little extra crispiness. One thing you can't do is, is crisp the skin to the detriment of ruining the fish. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So at that point, I was committed. Judges, any final questions or comments for Chef John? It's really delicious. Thank you. Thank you, Chef John. You may return to your station. Thank you. Coming up, our chefs prepare to square off in the dessert round after the break. Hi, I'm Kong, the writer and director of Liven. Hi, I'm Angie, the producer of Liven. Liven is a story about an EDM DJ, Max, that eventually goes deaf and has to learn how to cope with what he has and learn how to continue his career afterwards. We start production here in the next few months. However, we can't do anything without your help. Your donations will help us cover production and post-production costs. That include film entry fees, catering, props, set design, and much more. Liven, we're trying to create music that can make you feel and see the kind of emotion we really want to convey. Trance is a genre that's perfect for this film because it's very melodic and very emotional and uplifting. Animation will be one of the main keys to bring the film to life. We were inspired from the cinematic music video in which the music looks like it played through the water and fire effect. We are a dynamic team of 2D and 3D animators we want to do something different and bigger. As we learned earlier, Max is pretty much deaf in all but one ear. And so since he can't hear his music, he has to visually find another way to see and hear his sound. We want to incorporate 3D models to help bring to life some of the somatic machines that we're gonna place throughout the entire film. Not only that, but we also want to throw an actual live in concert. And we want you to be a part of it. Please help us bring live in to life. Welcome back to the finale round of Show Me Chefs. Our chefs have gone through two timed rounds of cooking where they created an appetizer and an entree for our judges. Now's the time for the dessert round. And now for the highlighted ingredient.
we have Whispering Oaks Dry White Wine. The chefs were given 12 ingredients at the beginning of the day, and only four remain. Chefs, which ingredients do you have left? Cheese, <coughs> eggs, coconut, and my favorite candy. And I'm ready. I have mother's beer, peanut butter, the uh, Palagio cheese, and caramel. And then we got our beautiful uh, Cascanade White. We started in year 97 and we've been in this current location for 11 years now and uh, we're all family owned, family owned and family run. It's just the three of us and we actually have uh, I think 15 varieties of grape that we grow although we don't make wine out of all of them but we make the whole range. We make red and white, we make a rosé, we make sparkling wine, we make them dry and sweet uh, and everything in between. You don't have to worry that you're wasting a whole bunch of resources to get a good bottle of wine. You can do it right here as well. Chefs, you will have 25 minutes to complete your desserts. Your time starts now. We have time to bake a cake. Yeah, it's gonna be real close. 19 minutes remaining, so. Wow. This is what I'm close. sitting here thinking, too. Yeah. That'll be a first on Chevy Chefs. We've never had anyone make a cake. A cake batter cake. We'll eat the batter. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good, too. <laughs> Judge Victoria, do you think that our chefs chose wisely throughout the competition with the remaining ingredients that they have left for the dessert? I think so. I'm a little concerned that Chef John has got to use beer and wine both. The flavor combination might be interesting there. Yeah. 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 But other than that, yeah, I think they did. Looks like he's, he's got a pretty it. good chocolate cake coming along there. Yeah. Sheet cake. <laughs> Judge Where? Christine, what about Chef Tony? What do you think about what he's got going on? <laughs> he's always got something interesting going on. <laughs> I don't know what happened to those eggs, Chef Tony. Where'd they go? I'm breading the cheese. You're so breading trying, the cheese? I'm trying to combine. I put a little honey in the eggs, so we got honey. A little, bit, a little bit of brown sugar, so I'll like a little bit. And I'm trying to do something I've never done. Telegio is really delicious. It's really creamy. Um, it's got a little bit of a, a tang to it. Um, it actually, it, it can kind of move into the sweet side. No way, Tony. Got it. That works. All right.
Chefs, you have five minutes remaining in the dessert round. Chef John just took his cake out of the oven. Judge Rick, what do you think about that? I think it's really impressive. It looks like it is set. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he seems to have incorporated all the, uh, the ingredients in there, and they seem to make sense. So I'm, I'm excited to try it. Judge Christine, what do you think about Chef Tony's dish? Oh, I'm looking at both of them are doing some interesting things. I'm gonna have to try these at home. They, uh, I can't wait to taste that fried cheese that he made. That looks incredible. All right, so now, I'm gonna use that right here. Chef Tony, you love color. Yeah. <laughs> My restaurant is really dark, so I gotta come up with colors. Time is ticking, you have one minute remaining. And then we're gonna put a couple of blueberries there so we'll taste the color there. So I got the cheese, I got the wheat butter, I got everything in there already. So. You don't belong here, buddy. There we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up, tools down. Chefs, the judges will now grade your final dishes. Chef John, please tell the judges what you've made for them. Sure, I did a, well, I guess you can call it a couple of faux. Um, I did a, a faux chocolate genoise with, uh, with, with porter used to make it nice and light. Um, usually in a genoise, you would whip your egg whites and, and, and fold it in, and I didn't have that much time, unfortunately, without a stand mixer. Um, so I, I knew that the effervescence of the beer would, would allow it to, to get nice and tender. So it should be a very tender, chocolate cake, there's, uh, there's porter in that, and then I made a, a faux buttercream out of the um, Tellaggio cheese and, uh, and butter and put that in the center so it's nice and melty and delicious. Made a hand whipped vanilla cream, uh, some sugar blueberries, and a, uh, a little bit of white wine caramel sauce that's both in the cake and on the plate as well. So, sure. Wow. Bye. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I really didn't think that I was going to like the uh, the Tellaggio buttercream, but it's it's really good. That it has um, the funkiness of the cheese almost mimics uh, cultured butter, yeah. okay. um, which is really really nice. The wine and uh, caramel pair really nicely. The texture of the cake is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, the beer really helps it out. Mm -hmm. So beer and wine wasn't a problem. It all cooked out, right? Yeah, I went, <laughs> I did. I went with the porter and paired it with chocolate, so you really don't even taste the beer that strong. There's actually a half a beer, almost a full beer in, in that cake, um, but it's more of just an accent, and the porter and the chocolate pair really, really well together. So. Yeah. Yeah. These flavors are awesome. Thank you, Chef John. You may return to your station. <laughs> Chef Tony, please tell the judges what you've made for them. Well, I caramelized the wine. I had a dry wine, so I had to come up with a recipe to caramelize the wine so I can caramelize the apples. So it's going to be kind of like, you're going to taste, I left the skin on, so you can taste a little bit of the sweet and sour to it because the cheese. So I need something to be strong to combine the cheese. So that was something that I had to leave the skin on for. And, um, and I used a little red wine. I had to caramelize the red wine with the caramels too, so I can combine that together. And then I did the uh, mango and coconut milk to saute the mango so you're gonna get more acidity in the, in the background for the cheese and a little yellow whipped cream just to help out to clean out the palate. See what you think and uh, garnish with a little, the little um, pear in the front. So let's see what you think. Enjoy. I'd say the fried cheese worked, right? <laughs> Where yeah, the, right bread in, the bread in that was kind of interesting how to mix it up. So that was kind of interesting how to do the bread in. So I did a little cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, the bread crumbs with uh, a, little bit of the, um, a little bit of honey that I put on the cheese. That's what they help to stick a little bit. Thank you, Chef Tony. You may return Thank to you. your station. Enjoy, thanks. 
chefs, you were told to create a three-course meal using the 12 ingredients provided. The judges have tasted and discussed your plates and will come up with the final decision on who will be crowned the winner of Show Me Chefs. I was really invested in the appetizer round because of the granola oven. I'm really impressed the way you both used it. It was out of the box, it was different, your applications, breading the scallops was really a cool idea. I'm going to definitely try that. And But I was most impressed with the way you made that paste, Tony, out of it with the peanut butter. I love the way, Chef Tony, how you, like you described it, four dishes on one plate. So there were a lot of flavors there. And um, But I will have to say that I loved how uh, Chef John did the root vegetables and then how he scaled the red snapper. So I think that um, of all the rounds, I think the dessert round was probably the most challenging for both of you. I, and you know, we were back here thinking, how are they gonna incorporate all these bizarre flavors into one dish? And um, you know, I think, uh, Chef Tony, you did a, a great job. The fried cheese was delicious. Um, and it actually even retained some of its crunch, uh, even in the, the sauces. Um, the, the apples actually picked up a lot of the wine flavor, so you definitely got that as an ingredient. But I think what was most impressive is, Chef John, the fact that, A, that you made a cake, that, and it worked, <laughs> and, I, yeah, and was really delicious. Um, and we got the flavors that were incorporated into it. The texture was amazing. Um, I know you were going for the Genois, and I know, I mean, without, without a mixer on anything, making a buttercream, making a cake that light and fluffy, using your hand was pretty impressive. Judges? who was the overall winner of Show Me Chefs season one. So it was really tough for us because both of you guys are, are amazingly talented. Um, you know, each round had a lot of challenges and, and were very difficult and posed different challenges for each of you. Uh, Chef Tony, um, you're amazingly fun to watch. Um, you have uh, definitely a flair in the kitchen. Um, your use of colors, your use of plating, your use of your combinations of flavors are, are really unique and your personality comes through in each of your dishes and we really liked tasting all of your food because it was so much you um, in it. Um, Chef John, uh, you have an amazing ability to uh, take these flavors that shouldn't go together and, and, and tame them so that they harmoniously exist on a plate. Um, you had in every round, uh, you had really beautiful sauces and they, uh, your dishes really came together. And so for that reason, among a few others, we decided that you are today's overall winner. Sure. Yeah. Chef, congratulations, buddy. Thanks. The service. Chef John, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, Chef John. You are the winner of Show Me Chef Season 1 and you will be going home with $3,000 today. Thank you very much.